How to use Italicus in cocktails! What's up guys, today on The Educated Barfly we're getting into another liqueur that's been really popular the last few years. Like Saint Germain, it's easy to cut into existing cocktail recipes to add new flavor profiles to some of your favorite cocktails and of course your own creations. It's floral, it's lightly sweet, easy to use, and it has surprising history. The liqueur in question, Italicus. Bergamot Rosolio. This episode is sponsored by Geology. Geology is a 16-time award-winning men's grooming and skin care company. They are recognized by magazines like Esquire, GQ, Men's Health. Geology creates simple, effective skin care routines customized specifically for you. I've been using Geology for quite some time. There was a moment where I was having bags under my eyes, took a little quiz, they came back with my perfect bundle. No more bags under my eyes. I'm looking pretty fresh these days. Each product is centered around just a few simple, effective ingredients that have been trusted by dermatologists for decades. They got a ton of new products and I have some of them here. I'm really excited to try them from body wash to deodorant. Before I got all these really great new products, my routine had been using just like my morning face wash in the morning along with a morning cream and then I have a night cream and a night eye cream as well. And what's really convenient about the way that Geology does stuff is the morning stuff is colored yellow so it's pretty idiot proof. And then the uh, night stuff is colored blue so that you easily know which one is for day and which one is for night. And now for a limited time, Geology are hooking up our viewers with an insane offer. They're offering you guys a 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. And on top of that, they are giving you an exclusive bonus offer on one of their skin, hair, or body products when added to your trial set. So use my code BARFLY70 at checkout to claim the offer or scan the QR code on the screen. That's BARFLY70 at checkout or scan the QR code on the screen for one of the best deals geology has ever done. The Italicus is a bergamot rosolio made in Italy and created by Giuseppe Gallo in 2016. Before launching Italicus, Gallo was a global brand ambassador for Martini and Rossi, winning a Spirited Award for Best International Brand Ambassador at Tales of the Cocktail in 2014, and founding Ital Spirits in 2015, which is a consultancy focused on innovative marketing and brand activations for modern Italian spirits and food companies. Literally the best person to launch an aperitivo brand. Although Italicus itself doesn't have much history at only seven years old, the aperitif is based on Rosolio, which has a fascinating history. Rosolio is an ancient Italian liqueur which dates all the way back to the 16th century. According to Difford's Guide, its name comes from an herb called Drosera rotundifolia, which means round-leaved sundew, also known as Ros Solis, which roughly translates to dew of the sun. Interestingly, it's a carnivorous plant found in bogs, marshes, and fens, and is known for having medicinal properties as an anti-inflammatory and anti-spasmodic. Rosolio was brought to Italy by Spaniards who learned to make it from the Arabs. The Italian tradition for this liqueur started in Florence, Italy, and quickly spread throughout the country. Traditionally, it was prepared by Florentine nuns of the Order of Santa Maria dei Servi, which was founded in 1233. It is particularly popular in southern Italy, where it is made with local citrus and fennel, and most recipes are handed down through generations. It is commonly drank at the holidays and offered to guests as a sign of good luck. It also bears mentioning that there are many, many different styles of rosolio, which are highly regional, much like its bitter counterpart, Amaro. To make to make rosolio, local citrus and botanicals are macerated into alcohol to create an elixir, then distilled water and sugar are added to sweeten it and proof it down. After these elements are combined, they are sometimes aged in a tino, which is a type of oak wine barrel. Some varieties will add cochineal, a small insect often used to make red pigment. Famously, Campari, back in the day, used to use it in its production, but it has since stopped. At the time Italicus was created, Gallo realized that the category was slipping into obscurity, and so he decided to be the founder of the first modern brand of Rosolio. Alrighty guys, I think you guys have a good idea of what this class of liqueur is. Let's give it a taste, talk about its flavor profiles, yeah? The on the nose, it's very floral, uh, a little lightly citrusy, kind of a little orangey. The most prominent smell in it is bergamot, which for those of you guys that need a reference point, well, it's really the most recognizable smell and taste in Earl Grey tea. It's a little bit orangey, but a little bit bitter, and it's really nice. All right, let's taste it. The right up front, it is a little bit sweet, but you get that strong bergamot flavor. So it's citrusy and then it's a little bitter on the finish. So it balances that sugar out quite nicely. It has a lot of botanicals. It's lightly floral like chamomile. I'm getting like a little bit of vanilla. 
Think of like a really nice light tea. Um, and it's gonna go really well in drinks because it's not so sweet that it's gonna throw the drinks off balance and it provides a little bit of that bitterness to kind of temper sweetness. You can use this in a lot of cocktails, like let's say a sour, uh, where you use this as a sugar content, then you add a little bit of simple syrup for balance, and then you have this really nicely balanced, very nuanced flavor profile. I'm really excited to cut this into cocktails. So the first one that we're gonna do is a bergamot Negroni, one of my absolute favorite cocktails and a cocktail that this is going to go really well in. The bergamot Negroni was created by bartender Naren Young around 2019 when he was the program director of the very famous Italian eatery and bar Dante. So first things first, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth and then three quarters of an ounce of a bitter aperitivo. This is actually an adapted recipe because I'm using my own bitter aperitivo that I think is gonna go really well, which is from Carpano. We're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of Italicus and one ounce of barrel aged gin. And then we're just gonna use a big old rock of ice and stir this down like I like to do in my big heavy glass. And if you guys wonder where I get this glass, because they do get a fair amount of emails about where I got this glass, we actually have partnered up with a company called Amela and we make this glass and the link for it is down below in the description of this video. I'm gonna give this guy a stir, approximately 40 seconds or so. I'd say until the outside of the glass is chilled, but I took this out of the freezer, so it's already chilled anyway. And then it's sitting on a rock of ice, so if you under stir it a little, it's okay because it's going to be sitting on this rock and diluting as you drink anyway. And then technically, there should be an orange slice in this cocktail, that's how they did it at Dante. I actually like to do a twist instead, and I just like it that way, so that's why I'm doing it. But if you wanna do it the way they did it at Dante, you're gonna to wanna to do an orange slice. I'm just gonna take a nice orange peel here and just sit over the drink like so. I'm just saying, uh, yeah, just gonna like that. So let's taste this guy. Oh my God. Being as delicate as it is, you would think the Italicus gets lost in this cocktail and it doesn't. It actually provides a nice little bit of bitterness. It's working really well with that uh, bitter aperitivo. Uh, the Carpano is gonna be kind of somewhere between Campari and Aperol. It's not as sweet as Aperol. It's not as bitter as Campari. It's like right in the middle. You get that barrel aged gin, bring in some barrel notes. You get the botanicals of the gin. You get the botanicals of the sweet vermouth. Everything plays really well together. So there it is, guys, the Bergamot Negroni. This next cocktail is gonna be incredibly easy. It is called a coffee and tonic. It was created in 2019 by the Italicus Global brand ambassador, Luca Misaglia. So again, we're just gonna take our glass. We're gonna build everything straight into the glass and we are going to do a scant two ounces of Italicus. Now I'm gonna do this the same way I usually do and not the, the spoon technique on this one. We're gonna take some tonic here and we're gonna pour it into the body of this cocktail to make sure that it combines and then also to get the effervescence going. And then we're gonna add some ice. Make sure that you add a lot of ice and that your tonic is well chilled. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in more tonic. Just make sure to pour off the ice so it doesn't layer. You wanna leave a little bit of space at the top. So you're gonna give this guy a light stir just to combine it. And then we are going to Carefully, we've left a little room here. Drizzle coffee over the top here and layer it onto this cocktail. And then we are going to take, I actually have a pre-cut wedge here. Just do a little wedge of lime. I'm gonna have to ruin this cocktail to drink it. Uh, so I'm just gonna squeeze my lime in here like so. I'm gonna mix this because that's what you're supposed to do. And it's fantastic. Italicus and coffee together forever. It's amazing. You get obviously a little bit of the lime citrus and then you get the citrus from the uh, Italicus. The lime does not uh, overtake the bergamot flavor. You get the, all the bergamot, you get all the florals in it, you get the quinine from the tonic and that tonic flavor and then of course you get the bitterness and the roasted flavors from the coffee all together. It's so good! Oh this is my one of my favorite highballs now. I love it. There it is guys, the coffee tonic. It is a historic moment here on Bar Flight because we are doing a cocktail from a bartender we have not done before. It is called the King's Breakfast. It was created by Steve the Bartender and a Steve the Bartender original. And uh, I don't have a creation year, although I'm sure he will be in the comments telling you guys when he created it. And because we are doing a Steve the Bartender cocktail, we are gonna be using a Steve the Bartender gin to make it. I think that I read that he uses a more savory gin. I wanna go with this uh, citrusy gin because I just wanna do that, okay? Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of italicus, three quarters of an ounce of the threefold gin. We're using the citrus one. It's not gonna be a chilled glass, guys, but 
when you do cocktails that are served up, always chill your glass ahead of time. Anyway, and then we're gonna do a big heaping bar spoon of strawberry preserves here. This is 100% a variation on the Sasha Petrosky cocktail, the Cosmonaut. And I think it's gonna be really good. That was really heaping, by the way. We're gonna add our ice to our tin. Give it a nice shake. Strain it into our should be chilled glass. Technically, this should be garnished with a strawberry, like a strawberry slice, uh, but I forgot to ask Marius to get it at the store when he got the lemons because we're very professional here on the Educated Barfly, so garnishless it is. I mean, you guys know that that works. Lemon juice, italicus, gin, and getting the botanicals from the gin, you're getting some botanicals and those floral notes from the italicus. You're also getting sugar. We balance that sugar out with the strawberry jam, which is really nicely balancing that lemon juice. You do not need any simple syrup in this at all. It is good. You got enough sugar. It's all very nicely balanced. It's a little bit tart. Obviously you're tasting the lemon juice as well. And there it is, the King's Breakfast. The Bergamot Garibaldi is based on another cocktail called the Spumoni and on a very specific build by a New York City bartender named John Mullen. Uh, let's get into it. That's all I gotta say about it. And I'm kind of addicted to doing really easy cocktails today because this one is also built in the glass. There is a cocktail called the Spumoni that was not created by John Mullen, uh -huh. but he created a specific build. Even though this is not his cocktail, I based this recipe on that cocktail. So this build. is uh, an original from you then, kind of? Not really, it's not really. It's it's, it's a, it's a, it's a like very, Garibaldi. it's my riff on John Mullen's Spumoni and it's very close to that Spumoni. So I don't feel comfortable calling it an original. It's like, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like a hybrid cocktail or whatever. Yeah, it's like your riff on his thing. It's like my riff on his riff kind of, but like it's not really my riff because even the ideas inside this thing isn't really my thing because also Naren Young did the whole fluffy, you know, kind of juice thing. So we're just gonna not give anyone creation credit on this. And if anyone gets the creation credit, it's John Mullen because I literally lifted like the exact build of his thing, but it's a little bit different from what he does, if that makes sense. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is half an ounce of gin, and then we're gonna do an ounce and a half of the Italicus Bergamot Rosolio. Okay, so about five mil, one bar spoon of simple syrup. And then we're just gonna stir that to combine that simple syrup. Since we are not shaking and it's a little bit different density and we're gonna add a little tonic water here. Get that effervescence going. And we're gonna add in our ice. And I wanna make sure that all of the ice goes from the bottom of the glass to the top of the glass. You don't want ice floating around in the drink if you can help it. You wanna keep everything as cold as possible. The juice is probably gonna layer a little Actually, no, we're gonna do this in a different way. Sorry, this is the first time I'm making this cocktail, guys. So we're gonna take a bunch of grapefruit juice, fresh grapefruit juice here, and we're gonna blend it up and make it fluffy. And now we got our fluffy juice. Ooh, look out, look at the fluff. We're gonna use the spoon trick to try and get around that. And then we're gonna take our fluffy juice here and we're just gonna add it in like so. And then we're just gonna garnish with a little dehydrated citrus like that. Well, first of all, it did layer just a tiny little bit. So I'm just gonna give us a nice little stir to combine. Just agitate it a little. You don't wanna agitate it too much because you don't want to uh, get rid of all the CO2 bubbles. And let's just give this a... Oh my God, is that delicious. I mean, it's just like the perfect brunch cocktail. It's bitter, it's a little sweet. The grapefruit and the italicus go really well together. You get that nice bitter, citrusy, light grapefruit flavor along with all of the botanicals and the citrus from the italicus and that bergamot and grapefruit go really well together. You get the taste of the tonic water, right? You get a little bit of that quinine, you get a little bit of the quinine flavor. And then it's nicely balanced out with just that little bit of simple syrup and the gin giving it some botanicals. And it's just like, you know, you've got the italicus giving it really delicate botanicals, but then you got more harsh botanicals from the London Gin. It's just a very well done, very light, very refreshing looking brunch cocktail. So there it is, guys, the Bergamot Garibaldi, the fluffy grapefruit juice. All right, guys, there you go. Four cocktails to help you guys use your Italicus. I do realize that they are all gin now. I didn't mean for that to happen, but they are all very different from one another, and it will give you a really good idea on what 
we can use Metallica Spore. I kind of feel like I need to do a part two of this video already where we use it with uh, some barrel-aged spirits or other things. I mean, we did a barrel-aged gin and obviously it works with those, you know, kind of barrel notes. Let's see how much you guys like this video and if you guys like it a lot, we'll do a part two. But until then, I will see you guys in another time. So today's pro tip comes directly from the video that we just did and it's all about when to add effervescent sodas into your cocktails. So generally cocktails have sugar in them. The sugar is going to make it denser than some something like soda water or tonic or even most uh, sodas like, I don't know, Canada Dry or something, or even ginger beer. So what you never want to do is pour that soda over the ice. If you pour it on the ice, it's going to layer on top of that denser cocktail. So you wanna make sure you mix it. The best way to do this is really to just strain the cocktail into the glass and then put the soda in about an ounce and a half or so. And then you can add your ice and top it up with soda or uh, tonic if you need to. But in a pinch, if you forgot to do that and you've already put your ice in there, you can run it down the spoon and it will go to the bottom of the glass.